So let's get going. I'm going to show you the five reasons that you freak when you speak in public. Reason number one, high stakes setup. What do you think I mean by high stakes setup? What does that mean to you? Anyone? It matters a lot yeah. to your future career. Yeah, in some way. What? And just give me some examples. If you gave a presentation in your world and it didn't go well, what would happen to you as a result? People wouldn't hire me. People wouldn't hire you. So there's a serious professional repercussion. You could lose your income or part of your income if it doesn't go well. That's pretty high stakes. What else? What about on the personal side? Embarrassment, humiliation, shame, ridicule, people whispering about you and laughing. Oh, that sounds horrible, doesn't it? Almost any situation where you're standing and talking in front of other people can feel like a situation, uh, can feel like an opportunity to do it wrong and have those other people turn against you. Even a wedding toast, right? That's no fun. So part of it is the high stakes setup. This is a moment that means a lot to you. Next is what I call content anxiety. Who can take a guess what content anxiety is? Forgetting your material. Yeah, forgetting your material. What if they ask a question and I don't know it? What if there's a slide where I don't really understand the term and I can't explain it well? If I don't show them that I know absolutely everything there ever was to know about this topic, what happens? I failed, right? I either strike out 27 batters or I lose the game. There is no in between. So people worry about content anxiety and they worry about what's underneath that. If they don't master the content, they might get revealed to be what? Fraud. A fraud. They're going to know. I'm going to be standing up here figuratively naked on stage, embarrassed in front of whoever it is, is in the audience. So content anxiety, yeah, lots of fun. Number three, it's what I call environmentophobia. What do you think this relates to? Yeah, that's a good example. What would a really big room do to you? Why would that matter? He can't see the audience. Yeah, that's part of it too. Let me give you some, some examples. You're in a really big room, as you said, with maybe 100 or 200 or 500 or 1,000 or more people in front of you. Maybe it's that when you stand on stage for the first time in your life, you experience what it's like to be blinded by spotlights. And you know there are a 1,000 people in the room, but you can't see any of them. And it's completely disorienting. Has anybody ever spoken under spotlights and had this experience? Chris has? Yeah? Maybe you anxious We're going to talk about that, too. Uh, what else can throw you off in the environment? A funky microphone. Funky microphone. What does that do? Yeah. Now, now, there's a lot of ways that can go. If your microphone doesn't work, that can throw you off because you know you should be louder. And sometimes if your microphone does work, you hear yourself, your, your voice at this unbelievably loud level just booming off the walls through the speakers. And a lot of us have never heard our voice that way or, or it's very rare. And so it doesn't sound natural to us. Why am I so loud? All right. So we got big rooms. We got lights. We got audio. What else can throw you off? Lack of a podium. Lack of a podium, right. Inattention to those that you're talking to. Yeah, absolutely. Now, the podium one's interesting because I would say I get thrown off when people make me use a podium, which does happen, right? They tell me to see, you can see I'm a <laughs> pretty mobile guy. Some, Some people say no. I think you had it sometimes. It's almost like a, yeah. a, as a shield. You know, yeah. It's not there anymore. Any of those things. How about if you arrive late and you don't have time to walk the room? How about if right before you start, the event manager says, you know what, we're running about 15 minutes late. Could you shorten your speech by 15 minutes? Great, thanks, go. <laughs> and you've prepared an hour and you don't know how to shorten it by 15 minutes, right? Any or all of those things, slipping and falling when you go on stage, which yes, I've done. Any of those things that relate to the environmental circumstances you're in, so that even if you know your topic really well, right? And even if you feel prepped and ready to go, the circumstances of the room itself throw you off. That's environment phobia. Here's another one, talking blind. And there are two parts to this. The first, and, and the general sense of talking blind, by the way, is this idea that the normal things about conversation and interaction that calm you down, keep you engaged, keep you reinforced, disappear in public speaking. Public speaking is a wholly unnatural undertaking. We are not built as human beings to do it. And you feel that when you're on stage. So the first one, for example, is grounding. Um, who should I pick on? How about Lisa? Lisa, how are you doing? Good. Yeah, how, how long have you been here today? Uh, since 7. Yeah, since 7 a.m., really. Mm -hmm. How's it going for you? Having fun? Yeah. 
Yeah? What's the coolest thing you've seen today? Um, the dancing heads and bobbleheads. Uh, yeah, the bobbleheads? Yeah. That's weird, isn't it? Mm -hmm. Are you having a good time right now? You yeah. should see us. We're in camera. So. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> All right, Lisa, thank you very much. That was excellent. Lisa just beautifully exhibited grounding. Grounding is the process of, of uh, creating a feedback loop with, the, with an individual with whom you're having a conversation. So if you're talking one-on-one, -on -one, you are close enough to read that person up and down, right? When you talk, you see them making eye contact with you. You see them nodding their head. You see them uh, in a comfortable position that indicates that they're not in any discomfort, right? They're giving you audio-visual feedback that lets, lets you know I'm tuned in to what you're saying. I'm listening to you. I'm in agreement with you. And if, some, if part of that changes, if something upsets them, you may see something in their facial expression. They may speak up. Uh, you may see their eyes change. But you'll get some sort of audiovisual cue that something's bothering them. So you know when they're good, and you know when they're suddenly not good. Well, when you give a presentation in public, that's gone. If you're speaking to 1,000 people and the spotlights are so bright that you can't see anyone in your audience, you don't have any feedback loop. It's just you talking out into the ether and hoping that someone out there hears you and likes what you're saying, or they could all be checking their email, right? That in and of itself can make you uncomfortable and throw you off your game. Now the other one in Talking Blind is called entrainment. This is the same idea, but it's a little funkier. I'm sure you all know that as human beings, we are all vibrating. We all have vibrations going through us. That could be your heartbeat, could be your pulse, could be your breathing. It could be your foot, you know, just doing this on the floor and kicking in time. Well, when you are engaged in a conversation with someone and you're really locked in with them, I bet you've all experienced this, your vibrations and their vibrations can become aligned with each other. And you'll find, without even realizing it, but if you pay attention to it now, you may see this. If their breathing slows, your breathing slows, right? They sit back like this in their chair, and you find yourself mirroring them, sitting back in your chair, right? This happens most notably in the music world with dancing. If you and a dancing partner are both dancing to the same music, you are entrained with them. And it happens to a lesser extent with talking. Well, when you're speaking in public, guess what disappears, right? Entrainment's gone too. So all of these cues, all of these moments of reinforcement and reassurance that you're used to counting on, some of them you're aware of, some of them not, they just vanish. And that's one of the reasons that you can feel so uncomfortable on stage. You can feel so awkward on stage, even if you're not exactly sure why. All right, everybody with me? All right, fantastic.